um, good morning, everyone. So <clears throat> just uh, a very quick uh, recap of what I did uh, yesterday. So yesterday, um, we uh, have seen the proof of the regularity of harmonic maps uh, into a sphere. And uh, we have seen that uh, the key point was um, to rewrite our equations in such a way that on the right hand side, um, you make uh, uh, appear uh, a Jacobian. And uh, the Jacobian, uh, as I've said, is uh, uh, among the quadratic combinations of the derivative of a given functions um, is the one that uh, have uh, a subtle extra regularity. We see, we have seen the uh, so-called uh, uh, Wente estimate, where it was uh, proved that uh, actually, uh, if you take um, a um, a quantity like that, uh, you don't have a, um, you have a really a more regularity in the sense that uh, when you make the convolutions of this quantity with the fundamental solution of uh, the Laplace equation, you get something which is bounded and uh, whose derivative is in a two. Okay, this I have also seen that I have also said that. Um, this inequality was uh, rediscovered almost 20 years later by Kaufman, Lyons, Meyer, Sams, where they prove uh, um, such uh, um, integrability by compensation result for more general in more uh, in a more general context, where uh, that include the case of a Jacobian. Okay, so uh, we have seen in particular, they prove in particular that uh, the Jacobian, so this uh, product here is not uh, only in L1, which uh, follows by other inequality, because if uh, this uh, to function, the gradient of A is the gradient B is in L1, it's clear the product is in L1, but they prove that uh, it is uh, in a subspace of L1, which is the so-called RD space. And this RD space, uh, as uh, I told you, yes, there are several definitions of this space, but uh, you have to keep in mind that uh, this uh, uh, space uh, behave well, uh, in respect to the Caldero Zygmunt uh, theory, in particular, you have that uh, um, if uh, uh, you assume that the Laplacian, so if you saw, as I said yesterday, if uh, we solve the um, Laplacian phi equal to some function f, which is uh, actually in uh, RD, then you can uh, conclude that also the Asian matrix is a uh, phi is in L1, which is not true in the case of uh, uh, if f is only in L1. Okay, so this is what uh, we have uh, uh, seen yesterday. So uh, uh, today um, I'm going to um, describe uh, uh, the situation where uh, the um, uh, target is not anymore a sphere, but uh, a general manifold. So, so I hope that, uh, okay, today I'm, I'm going to finish the um, regularity concerning harmonic maps, and I hope that already today I can um, switch to the local uh, case. Okay, so um, so what about general closed submanifolds? Okay, so uh, we have seen that. Uh, um, so you accept. So it was uh, uh, the, the computation of yesterday that uh, uh, you can write uh, the um, uh, in the case of this uh, in the case of uh, the hypersurface the harmonic map equation as the this form where nu in this case is uh, the normal vector uh, to the uh, hypersurface in particular so okay so you say uh, you have this equation that uh, 
remind you the case of the sphere. And uh, so maybe you can do, uh, they say, you can perform the same strategies of what we have uh, done uh, yesterday with the sphere case. So what we do, you add something which is zero, huh? because uh, since um, you, uh, the gradient of you is a tangent to the sphere, it's clear that when you take the scalar product with your normal vector, you get zero. Okay, so you can, you have the right to add to the right hand side something which is zero. Hmm? And then, uh, okay, you look at uh, uh, this uh, potential here. And the yesterday, uh, we in the case of this sphere, we we said that uh, uh, this uh, mm, this potential was uh, uh, as the, it was um, diversion free, mm? and uh, this permits you to um, to transform the equation the right hand side in a Jacobian. But in the case of a general hypersurface. It, there is not uh, a reason for which uh, this potential is uh, divergent free. Hmm? But uh, what uh, it remains true, it is uh, uh, the fact that uh, this uh, potential here is anti-symmetric. And uh, this is actually the key point of the story because uh, also if uh, uh, this remained true also if we consider the case of some manifold of codimension greater than one. And uh, how you do that, you, you see that, um, again, uh, you use the, um, these two informations, namely the, um, the, the, part, the Laplacian of U is, uh, um, is normal, hmm? the tangential projection is zero, and uh, use the fact that, that, on the contrary, the gradient of U is tangent. So uh, how do you write, uh, okay, the Laplacian of U uh, is equal, again, we, we have seen already such uh, um, computations, but what you do is, uh, okay, you write um, the gradient of U is, uh, uh, is equal to uh, divergence, of, we can write the um, tangential projection of the gradient of U because, uh, uh, because of this, um, this equality. You, uh, you apply Leibniz and you arrive to this uh, expression here, okay? But then I use the fact that PT is, uh, is um, symmetric, so you can put uh, on the other side, in front of the gradient of this matrix. And, uh, and then uh, at this point, uh, you use the fact that uh, actually um, you have a PT plus a PN is equal to the identity. And therefore the gradient of P is equal to minus the gradient of PN, sorry. And uh, what you do, you replace uh, uh, here, uh, you see the gradient of PT you replace by minus uh, here the gradient PN. And then, uh, uh, and then, uh, and then uh, you use a further property of the projection, so in particular this one, and uh, namely PT and PN are orthogonal, so it, the gradient of this product is zero. So you apply again Leibniz and uh, you get that actually minus this stuff here is equal to this. And so I rewrite finally. Uh, so, okay, I just, I rewrite finally the, my equation in this way. So delta u, uh, delta u is equal to this stuff here. So this is the potential. Okay, so but now, now, the idea, um, let's try to, to see if we make appear a, um, uh, an anti-symmetric potential. And it is possible because the idea is uh, to add, hmm, in order to make this potential uh, anti-symmetric, you subtract its uh, symmetric part. And the symmetric part uh, of this uh, 
stuff here hmm, is just this one. So I subtract uh, the symmetric part of this stuff and I can do because I, I, I can do without any exp expense in the sense that uh, you use the fact that the gradient is tangent. So PN, the, the normal projection is zero. So when I add, when I subtract the, um, the symmetry part, uh, uh, not the symmetry, yes, the trans the transpose of this, uh, uh, this part, um, you get something which is zero. And uh, actually uh, we get uh, here, sorry, uh, you get here, this part here is uh, a matrix which is anti-symmetric. So in the end, also in the, um, the case of general manifolds, you can rewrite your equation in, uh, in the form of uh, a systems uh, linear system where the uh, potential is an anti-symmetric matrix. And the why it's, um, uh, it's important, it's a, a good, a good, uh, a good point. Okay, first of all, uh, in the, at the beginning of our, um, of uh, the course, I said that uh, um, I wanted to study, so I said that it's important to study, um, the goal was to, to consider um, oil Lagrange, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Lagrangian, which were, um, which are conformal invariant. And uh, um, actually, you can prove that uh, all uh, the, so the euler lagrange equation associated to such Lagrangian can be written in this way, okay? And uh, it's uh, now, once uh, you are this, uh, you have, um, so, okay, I just, uh, okay, I just, uh, so maybe I come back uh, later to this example and, um, and uh, uh, so, okay, S yes, so, okay, I, I, um, it is, okay, it is important, sorry, I wanted, uh, uh, so, okay, so it is, uh, uh, so maybe I, I, I forgot, but anyway, so it's, um, okay, I have this, uh, this, uh, this, um, Yes, this, okay, I have this, uh, uh, I, I write uh, the conformal Lagrangian in this way. And uh, um, actually I have, uh, um, there is uh, uh, the, the result that I, I, I mentioned maybe yesterday that uh, says that by, proved by uh, Tristan Riviere that uh, saying that the um, critical point, uh, the critical point of conformal invariant Lagrangian, so I wrote yesterday such a result, uh, are um, C0 alpha. And the reason is that it was able to prove that any, all of the Euler Lagrange equations associated to such Lagrangian are uh, written in this way. Okay. And uh, so maybe I can, um, so in particular, so uh, at the beginning on the, on the, this uh, lecture or the, this course, I, I mentioned that uh, one of uh, uh, known examples are prescribed mean curvature equation. And uh, uh, in, in 3D, you can write in this way, and, and uh, actually uh, this uh, equation can be uh, re written in a form of uh, that uh, I said before, namely the, the product of a potential, which is anti-symmetric, which is this one times a gradient. And uh, I want to uh, tell you something that uh, um, this, uh, um, uh, the, this, this fact that uh, you can see, for instance, this equation in this way, 
permit uh, to improve the um, result where that were present in the letter in the literature before the result uh, by Riviere because uh, previously uh, when people studied this equation they try to um, to apply uh, always uh, you know the um, uh, went inequality but uh, uh, this was possible only if uh, uh, under some assumption of uh, age namely uh, the assumption which is uh, bounded and also Lipschitz okay and uh, uh, it was uh, even a conjecture by Hildebrand that uh, the regularity of this this equation um, uh, was um, still a hold also only under the assumption that uh, your function h is only l infinity and this conjecture was a uh, actually proved um, as a consequence of the regularity of system of this type. Okay, so um, again, uh, uh, there, is, there are some counter examples, maybe some of you can uh, think, uh, is it uh, um, assumption of anti-symmetry uh, of the potential necessary? And the answer is uh, yes, because you can find a counter example, so example of solutions of quadratic uh, um, of uh, systems where the potential is not not symmetry and the solution are not bounded. Okay, so um Okay, so I wrote here, but uh, I think uh, let me I want to uh, check uh, um, if I where I wrote the yes, this one. Yes, it is this one. <laughs> so I wrote actually already uh, yesterday this result, which is, I said, a positive general result, namely the critical point of fine energy conformally variable Lagrange in 2D RC0 alpha log. Okay, and uh, this result um, was a, a consequence on the fact that. Um, all the critical points satisfy um, a, a system of uh, equations of this type where omega is uh, an anti-symmetric uh, potential. Okay. So why it is important this? Okay, let's uh, uh, try to understand why uh, the anti-symmetry plays an important role. Okay, so uh, we start uh, uh, with the easy case. Huh? Suppose that uh, um, you have uh, uh, the system here and you start uh, with the case where omega is divergent free. Uh, in this case, uh, you add that we apply again a Poincare uh, lemma. So omega is nabla purpose or something. So you rewrite uh, the equation where the right hand side is a Jacobian. So you can apply again Wendt's theorem that we saw yesterday and we get the regularity of the solution. But what about the general case? Okay, so if omega is not uh, uh, divergent free. One first uh, try is the following. So let's try to do a node decomposition of omega. Namely, you split omega as the sum of uh, a gradient plus a curl. But when you plug into the equation, you are stuck. Why? Because, okay, on the right hand side, you get uh, here. A Jacobian, so it's nice, but here you have uh, uh, the product gradient, uh, but this uh, does not uh, help at all. So it uh, does not say anything. So the second uh, try is the following. Okay, so uh, let's try, okay, to, um, so the idea is uh, uh, to make uh, um, a change on, um, um, so it's a, a sort of non-linear Hodge decomposition. So the idea was actually to make a change of variable. So namely, you want to you want to um, uh, 
to multiply P, so the gradient of U, by a matrix P, which is a, a rotation, and uh, um, try to, um, to uh, rewrite, uh, to, to write the equation in such a way that uh, on the right hand side, you can apply some integrability by compensation result. Okay, so the, um, what uh, uh, it was done is, okay, let's try to do another kind of decomposition of your, um, your um, matrix omega. So um, you solve, uh, so it is uh, a result uh, um, that, uh, so it was inspired by uh, some result uh, proved by Ullenberg. So you, you find uh, a, a rotation P, so uh, such that this uh, quantity here is divergent free. Okay, so this means that uh, you, this equation is equivalent to say that, uh, is equivalent to say that uh, this quantity here is equal to what I call nabla per psi. So the problem is that actually to find P rotation xi antisymmetric in such a way that uh, you add this and you can do because omega is antisymmetric and uh, uh, it's not easy proof, but you can uh, uh, find uh, at least that uh, when uh, the, um, the, 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 the L2 norm of omega is sufficiently smooth, you can find Xi and P satisfy this uh, equality. And then uh, what you do? Okay, so let's, uh, uh, Computer, let computer uh, the, the, the equation satisfied by this new variable. I let you make the computation, and uh, what uh, we we um, we find is that on the right hand side there is okay a curl which is this one, and it's not exactly a gradient. It's a gradient up to this uh, this um, matrix here. So the problem is not finished, you have to go on. So the idea is now, so you have, uh, okay, you keep uh, for the moment Xi and P that satisfy this formula. And uh, what you do, you perturb a little bit P. So, and uh, by considering P multiplied by this matrix. Epsilon is, epsilon is a matrix. And let's see what, uh, which um, problem satisfy now this uh, quantity here. So the gradient of U is multiplied by this new matrix. So I like you to do the computation. So it's you in differentiate, you apply Leibniz and then uh, you use the, that uh, omega. And there is this relation between omega, xi and p. And you find that actually this, uh, um, uh, this, new this new variable here satisfy on the right hand side, so on the right hand side there is uh, the gradient of u and this potential here. And the, the dream would, would be that uh, this is divergent free. So the final step is actually to uh, find epsilon such that this quantity here is divergent free. And what you do actually, you solve this problem here. So this, uh, you, you solve this with this boundary condition and that uh, you can do. So the, the technique to solve this um, problem is, uh, Okay, first of all, uh, when uh, um, by assuming that uh, your matrix omega as uh, uh, L2 north small, you can prove that uh, also this uh, um, two quantity P, uh, the nabla P in L2 is less uh, uh, the L2 norm of omega, and also this one is less than the 
L2 norm of omega. And uh, so you have uh, actually that uh, these two quantity uh, are small. Uh, so, and also P, the graduate of P is small. So you can uh, apply a fixed point uh, theorem and also, uh, also, also in this problem, they went in equality plays a, a role. And you get uh, that actually, you find an epsilon matrix which is uh, um, W12 and it is bounded. Mm -hmm. And also the, the, you find that also the norm, the gradient, uh, the L2 norm of epsilon is also majorized by the uh, L2 norm omega and it is small. Okay, so <sighs> once you add this, you have um, actually, uh, and also the, sorry, also this one, the two are small. And uh, so this, um, mm, uh, uh, this argument permits to uh, construct a matrix that they call A, and this is uh, the perturbation of your rotation, which is invertible. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, actually satisfy this conservation law. So I said that actually the the goal was to determine epsilon in such a way you had this, and this uh, it exactly this one. And then uh, uh, by this uh, you apply Poincaré lemma. Since it is a divergent free, you can find uh, a matrix B whose uh, nabla pair is equal to this. Uh, potential here. So uh, the, the good thing is that uh, you can, uh, you can uh, uh, rewrite this equation again as a conservation law. So this uh, thing is equivalent to this one. And then uh, you say, then well, how I use this? So, uh, so I want to, to make an again remark. So also in this framework, so we have seen actually that uh, in the case of uh, um, uh, harmonic maps uh, with value into a sphere, the harmonic map equation was equivalent uh, to a, the uh, conservation laws discovered by, um, by Chata. But also in this framework, you can reformulate your harmonic uh, map equations in terms of a conservation law. But then how you use? So you see that, uh, okay, from this, uh, let me write uh, uh, from, from this, uh, okay, from this uh, um, equation, you have what? That the divergence of A gradient of U is equal to minus divergence of B nabla per U. And this is equal to what? It is equal to exactly na, um, gradient on B minus gradient on B nabla per of U, which is uh, uh, exactly nabla per B times the gradient of U. So this is what I wrote here. So I have actually that uh, uh, the divergence of this stuff here is equal to a Jacobian, which is RD, because we have seen that by this result uh, in Koifman, Lyons, Meyer, Sam says that the, the Jacobian is an RD. So, but also, but also the curve of A nabla U is a uh, also in RD because uh, you can, uh, um, by definition, this is, this is the definition. So you have uh, the divergence of something is in RD and the, the curl of something is in RD. And uh, you, by using uh, again the odd decomposition, you realize that actually uh, the gradient uh, A times the gradient of U is uh, in uh, uh, W11, and uh, this implies that uh, actually uh, we have seen that in dimension, sorry, in dimension two, you have, uh, in dimension two, you have uh, this uh, uh, inclusion, 
so I have that uh, the graduate U up to this matrix, which is invertible, is in L21, which is, uh, yesterday I said that it's uh, a better space than L2. And uh, I use the fact that, that A is invertible, so I add that the graduate of U is in L2, 1, and this implies actually that U is continuous. So you see that, uh, okay, here it's um, a mixture. So uh, behind all this stuff, there is this uh, nonlinear arch decomposition that was uh, um, possible because of the fact that we are dealing with uh, uh, anti-symmetric potential. And as a second step, we try to uh, reformulate again uh, our equation in terms of uh, Jacobian that uh, satisfy um, more regularity assumptions. Okay, so as I said, this result permits uh, uh, to not only to solve the regularity for uh, harmonic for uh, harmonic maps with value into general manifolds, but also in the case uh, uh, where you consider um, more general uh, Lagrangian, in particular um, the solution of the um, prescribed mean curvature equations. Okay, this is. Um, uh, the end of this part, uh, if there are some questions, go ahead. No? I think no. Okay. So, <clears throat> okay, as I said, at the end, uh, I will give uh, uh, all references uh, of what uh, I have presented. Okay. So now let's start um, the uh, no local part. The local part. So, as I said uh, at the beginning of the course, uh, um, my the model example that I want to consider are critical points of uh, this uh, uh, Lagrangian here. Okay, and the critical uh, uh, points of this uh, um, uh, this uh, this Lagrange are called uh, weak uh, um, alpha harmonic maps, and uh, they're being introduced uh, in a joint war with Riviere, and then uh, since then there are a lot of um, uh, extensions and development uh, um, about this uh, topic that I will mention in the end. Okay, so you belong again to this um, fractional subole space, uh, and I assume again that U takes value into a manifold. Hmm? So I just uh, recall you again uh, some uh, preliminaries concerning the uh, fractional Laplace. Most of you, I think, uh, already uh, know about that. So in, in the case where you consider uh, the, uh, this particular energy, you know that uh, you can uh, express this energy by using, uh, you can prove by using uh, um, um, computation in Fourier space, you can prove that uh, this, uh, this energy here, you can express also in this way, okay? So, um, and actually uh, some uh, people, are, work also um, that uh, came later, um, focus their study to uh, these equations also in, more, in a more general situation. As I uh, said uh, um, in the, my first or second, uh, in my first lecture, I said that uh, this equation here was invariant with respect to the trace of conformal maps, and uh, I said that in, far, in particular, if I consider, um, it's not the Cayley transformation, but uh, I can say this particular uh, conformal transformation from uh, your disk uh, to the upper uh, upper um, half plane, you realize that the restriction, the restriction, the first component to the to the, the, the circle coincide actually with the classical stereographic projection from S1 minus I into R. So 
is uh, this projection. And uh, again, uh, um, because of this uh, invariance, uh, you have uh, uh, the uh, you have this equality here. The two quantities uh, coincide, and moreover, there is uh, a relation between the half Laplacian on the sphere and the half Laplacian on R. So um, this is uh, again. Uh, um, some uh, is a, a, a computation that you can do. It's uh, an exercise for you, but uh, you can find, for instance, uh, in, um, in the, you, these things uh, is classical. And uh, for instance, uh, I will uh, give you a, a reference about that uh, at the end. And uh, why I made this uh, uh, remark? Because uh, actually um, considering our Alpha harmony maps on the real line is essentially the same to consider alpha harmony maps on the sphere. So you can pass from one to the other one. Okay, so then I, I, I recall some uh, the definition of the alpha Laplacian uh, on the sphere, but uh, I, it's not now important. I just want also to recall another uh, property uh, which, uh, which is uh, related to the alpha Laplace that uh, uh, most of you already know, um, is uh, the fact that um, it is, uh, if you con is uh, the so-called Dirichlet to Neumann property. So uh, if you consider uh, the uh, harmonic extension of uh, your function u, uh, uh, given by the, by the uh, Poisson formula, uh, you know that uh, the uh, normal derivative of uh, your extension coincide with uh, the alpha Laplacian of you. Okay, so actually the, the condition, um, a condition that you impose, uh, if, you con if you impose a condition on the normal derivative, you, you just impose a condition on the half Laplacian. So uh, in some sense, uh, uh, the harmonic map uh, equations, which is this one, uh, uh, can be um, rephrased in, uh, um, in terms of its harmonic extension. So this uh, problem can be formulated by saying that uh, um, uh, the harmonic extension satisfied that the normal derivative is uh, tangent. So, and I have to say that, um, um, okay, this system uh, is um, uh, included in a, um, a bigger class of harmonic uh, maps with free boundary and uh, actually, I have to to mention that uh, some people, um, after the introduction of alpha harmonic maps, try to um, to use uh, this uh, uh, harmonic extension uh, instead of using the directly these equations. Uh, this extension allows uh, Silvestre Caffarelli, and uh, this uh, gives uh, uh, some result in some situation, but uh, at, it has also some limits uh, uh, if you want uh, to, for instance, uh, to study um, this equation in, uh, um, instead of consider the alpha Laplace, you consider uh, other powers of uh, um, the Laplace. Okay, so uh, okay, so I mentioned uh, uh, what uh, we proved. We proved that actually uh, this was uh, just uh, an overview of some uh, properties of uh, the alpha Laplace, and uh, uh, what we prove with uh, Riviere is that uh, actually uh, weak alpha harmony maps uh, into a general manifold are C zero alpha log for any alpha. And then with uh, Alessandro Pigatti, who was a PhD, PhD, PhD student here at ETH, we proved that actually um, they are, um, if the, the manifold is a CK, then you can prove that actually U is in say K minus one delta for any delta. 
And in particular, if uh, uh, n is infinity, you have uh, that u is infinity. So and if uh, the, the target manifold is a sphere, you get that actually it is uh, uh, c infinity. Okay, so, so, okay, so I want to, to give you uh, an idea uh, uh, how uh, we got such uh, irregularity. And again, uh, again, uh, uh, this, um, um, this uh, result uh, follows from uh, a result, uh, a more general result for um, no local, what, uh, no local linear um, systems, fractional system, uh, no local, okay, um, linear system with an anti-symmetric potential. So in some sense, um, you consider a system of this type. So in some sense, okay, V in this, uh, um, in this theorem, so we prove that if V is in L2 solution, of this uh, problem, then you can prove that Laplacian one over four is in LP log for any P. So you have to think that why it is a consequence of this fact, because uh, you, you have to keep in mind that V in the, when you consider the uh, harmonic map, uh, alpha harmonic map equations, V is just uh, the Laplacian one over four of U, which is uh, in L2. And so you have a result concerning the Laplace one over four uh, of u, which is in LP log for any p, and this uh, implies from this you get actually from this fact uh, you get actually that c u is c zero uh, alpha log no? for any alpha. So once you have proved this, uh, you get the regularity also for the uh, uh, harmony alpha harmony maps. Okay, so, okay, why? So, okay, so uh, I would like to, first of all, uh, so to justify what I have said now, say why it's, uh, I have the right to say that. And actually, I want to show you that uh, actually I can um, rewrite the alpha harmonic map equation in terms of a um, no local linear system where you have again an anti-symmetric potential. Okay, so you start again. Uh, so I said that, uh, I said that uh, uh, the Laplace one over U is, uh, um, is orthogonal. Mm -hmm. So I can express the, this one in this way. Hmm? So it's coincide with, uh, um, with this, uh, it's a normal projection. So what you do, so you see that here, you have to think that the, uh, the roles played by the Laplace is now played by the Laplace one over two. And the role played by the gradient is played by Laplace one over four. Okay, so uh, what we do, so we start uh, by consider Laplace and one over two of you. And uh, um, you write, uh, so you write in this way. And then uh, you, you write one over two, the Laplace and one over two is Laplace and one over four, the Laplace and one over four. And uh, you split what it is here in two parts. So the first part uh, is, uh, so you take the tangential projection of the Laplace one over four plus the normal projection, the Laplace one over four. And uh, if you remember, in the case of the harmonic map equation, we were lucky because uh, in some sense, okay, this was, uh, if uh, you think that uh, this, uh, correspond to the gradient of u, this, was, this term was zero. And then for this part, we differentiate, we apply the Leibniz rule. So it was the gradient of something else, or the divergence of something else, so we apply the Leibniz rule. The problem is that 
you are dealing now with no local operator. So such uh, you have not, there are some issues that uh, arise in this context. So there are, and these issues are essentially two. The first one is, okay, in the, no, in the local uh, case, as I said, the gradient of view is uh, tangent. So, but it's not the case here. You cannot say that Laplacian one over four is tangent. And the second issue that I say, I just said, is that when uh, uh, for the, um, the local case, you have uh, the Leibniz rule, but it's not true that when you take Laplacian one of four of AB is equal to this stuff. So you cannot distribute uh, the uh, fractional derivatives without any uh, expense. So you have to pay something. And uh, the novelty actually in this, uh, in this contest is that uh, what uh, we did it actually is uh, the introduction of what we call three term commutation. That uh, I will, uh, we will see that um, they play, uh, it is the counterpart we will see of the Jacobian in the, lo the, uh, in the local case. Mm -hmm. Okay, so actually it took uh, some time to understand uh, how to rewrite uh, the, uh, the map equation in such a way that we could find some compensation uh, results. And uh, what we do is uh, the following. We said that uh, this uh, thing uh, is not equal to this. So we call uh, H1 over two AB, the error, the error of the missing product rule. And, uh, this is called what we call three term commutator. Huh? So is um, you can see as a, a pseudo differential operator. And uh, in this particular case, uh, you have also nice integral representations. So um, you can express uh, this commutator also in this way. Okay, now I am presented the, the, uh, the, um, the case where we are in 1D, but some things extend also in dimension greater than one. So you can also uh, define this operator when uh, instead of having one, you get n, but I don't want to, to talk about this here. Okay, so what we discover actually is that uh, it's something uh, which uh, we, we didn't expect, but it's true, that uh, if you take uh, the Laplacian one over four of these uh, things here is in RD. And uh, it's important that you can uh, estimate the RD norm of this stuff by the uh, L2 norm of Laplacian one over four of A, and the, the uh, Laplacian one over four of B. So it's um, in some sense, this quantity here, it's uh, replaced the Jacobian. Uh, the Jacobian, this quantity here is the, replaced the Jacobian in the, the local stuff. And actually it's all that the RD space is majorized by the gradient of the L2 norm of the gradient of A and the gradient, uh, the L2 norm, the gradient of B. And I want to also, before going on, I would like to make you, um, to, to stress something. So what does it, okay, the fact that you see, the fact that uh, um, this quantity here is uh, in RD gives you also, so, and uh, it's, uh, that also H1 over two AB, is even in L2-1, and so in particular in L2. And actually, if you look at your, sorry, if you look at, uh, so, uh, if you look at this commutator, it's not evident it is true. Why? Because 
If uh, you take um, two function A and B, such that you have the Laplacian one over four of A is in L2, a Laplacian one over four of B is in L2, you have not, uh, you, um, what you have that A is in BMO, which is not bounded. So it's clear that if you look at, uh, for instance, these two quantity here, this is in L2, if A is, is in L infinity, then uh, this is still in L2. If uh, this is in L2 and B is in L2, is, is um, in L infinity, then uh, this is also in L2. But uh, this is not the case. So you don't have, uh, uh, it's not clear right away to see that even these uh, quantities are in L2, but it's, it comes that there is a sort of magic compensation between uh, these terms in such a way that uh, you have this uh, gain of regularity. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to finish actually with um, this uh, remark that uh, uh, I repeat this, uh, this has been uh, uh, this uh, three commutator, which is I think uh, the most, uh, the novelty of this, uh, this theory is uh, the um, fractional counterpart of the Koifman Lyons Mayer Sams estimate for the Jacobia. And uh, it also represents a borderline case of the so called Leibniz rules for fractional derivatives, which have been introduced by Koenig, Ponchen, and Vega in 1993. But uh, the, the estimate that they get is in the LP space. It's, it's just uh, a generalization of Helder inequalities for Helder um, inequality for um, such commutators. The novelty is that we could prove this borderline case. Okay, so I think I stop here, and uh, uh, tomorrow. I'm going to, uh, first of all, to show you the, uh, the final uh, form of the harmonic map uh, um, equation and uh, to mention uh, uh, also some, um, uh, okay, how we solve this problem, uh, how we study the regularity, which was not so trivial, I have to say. And, um, and uh, I don't know if uh, it's up to you, uh, but I know I don't know if uh, I have time. I wanted to uh, give you uh, the proof of Wente inequality because it's a real nice exercise where um, you actually see by hand this uh, sort of uh, uh, compensation phenomena. But uh, I don't know if I uh, will able to do what I can do. I, I will, if uh, I will not able to, we have, I will have, I have time to do that. I will, I can put on the slides anyway, and uh, you can see later, okay?